What I'm going to share to you today is just actually just a continuation of what I preached uh, two weeks ago. Okay, and uh, and uh, it's on actually on Galatians chapter six verse seven, and uh, and, and on chap, uh, chapter verse seven, I, we talk about the the uh, principles of sowing, right? Um, so let's uh, read. Uh, uh, let's read. Let's read on Galatians chapter six verse seven. Okay, the Bible says here, "Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reap what he sows." Okay. So if you notice here, okay, so God, uh, Apostle Paul gave us actually a, uh, excuse me, all right, <laughs> all right, so actually here we can see here is that this, these are the principles of, of sowing and reaping. It's actually, it's, it's, uh, it's very powerful in every area of our life. It covers the, in every area of our life, whether we know it or not. Okay, it will be applied to us because this is a spiritual principle. Just like I said what, last week, that you know there's a physical law, right? And whether you know it or not, it will be applied to you, right? Just for example, you example yung, uh, the the law of gravity. If a person doesn't know that and he went to ten floor and jump, okay, his ignorance will not uh, make him to be an excuse, right? But it will be applied. The same thing also when it comes to spiritual law. So that's why it's so careful that we need to understand these principles also with uh, sowing, of, sowing and reaping. Why? Because it will be applied to us. And, and, and my text last week, my, my point was that we need to be aware of the things that we do. Right? Because you are in the process of sowing. And eventually, you are going to reap what you sow whether good or bad so church is we need to be you know it's it will be be in the in the advantageous position if we will be careful and understand the law of heart of the law of the harvest right so that's my thing uh, the, the thing that you know that i talked about last, uh, last week um and and god said that at the proper time you will reap a harvest right god didn't say that you may reap a harvest or you can reap a harvest or you should reap a harvest but what god is he selling here is stating here is that you will reap a harvest okay at a proper time when the thing is right you will reap the harvest okay so and now in galatian chapter in galatian again in the same chap same chapter and in, in verse verse 9 says in galatians 6 9 god apostle paul give us an encouragement as we Keep on sowing the good seed into our life. Because we need to understand, we need to eliminate and, and, and identify what are the good and the bad seed that we are sowing into our life, in the life of our family, your spouse, your children, and, and everything. Right? We need to identify. Since we, uh, so here in verse 6, verse 9 says here, Let us not become weary in doing good. At the proper time, you will reap a harvest if what we do not give up okay so and that will be my text for today okay and and, and that's uh, verse 9 okay so we need to understand that the lord promises our seeds that we can sow and and, and the bible here is that it says here let us become uh, become not uh, let us not become weary in doing Good. So what is good? If I ask you, church, what is good? Good are the things that God spoken to us. Things that God revealed into our heart. That will bear fruit in our life. Remember, God did not uh, uh, call you to be successful in the eyes of the men in the world. But God call you to be fruitful are we getting it okay, and, and, and that's why you know and the bible says we have to what to identify the the good seed okay that we are sowing into our life because the bible says we cannot get around with it okay you will definitely reap the harvest amen at the proper time okay so as i said we have about 66 bags of seeds. 
All right, you have how many how many books do we have in the Bible? Sixty-six, and that's how much seed of bugs that you have that God has given us that we need to know and understand so that we can apply it into our life. You can start sowing the good seed, right? And up, uh, same thing also, uprooting the bad seed. Okay, if we are in the kind of situation that are negative, that are things that are not working according to the word of God in our life. What did I say last week? The last time is that you also can apply the principle of the harvest. You can reverse the things that are not right in your life. Okay? By sowing the good seed that comes from the word of God. Are you getting it, church? Okay? So, <clears throat> okay, so what we need to do is to go to that word, be in the word, study the word, understand it. Okay, so that you will have the word of God. Those are, those are the seeds that got the promises of God in our life. Okay, remember that God, God said that when God, when God revealed it to you his words, his promises, his plan uh, for your life, God said that he will see to it that it will come to pass. And remember in Joshua chapter 21 verse 45, and what God says, not one of all the promises of God failed. Right? Not one. But the thing is that we have to receive it. It's not just you heard someone quoting a verse and you say, oh, that will be my life, verse 2. What I'm trying to say here is that you have to receive it personally by the revelations of God into your life. Are we getting it, church? You have to spend time with God. You, your spirit needs to receive that word. It's not just you hear from from someone else, but you have the spirit. Your your spirit. The, your spirit will bear witness with God's revelations in your life. I'm sure you have already experienced that, right? When you do your day devotion, you study the word of God, and suddenly, bam! And, it's, and, and that scripture jump out, and you know that God is speaking to you. You know that this is what God wants for, for your life. And this is what God wants in the directions of life that you need to take. I'm sure, are we getting it, church? Right? So that's kind of experience that you need to have in order for you to be able, oh God, to be able to sow the seed into your life. It's not just, just you know, going to like a McDonald's, doing a drive through You just order so quickly and then you run and then you're done. No, it's not like that way, church. Okay, that's not how the seed of the harvest works. It may work, but it will be what to your advantage because you don't pay attention to this word and you start sowing that, you know, that kind of seed of not giving so much importance in the word of God. You just ignore it. You just, you know, it doesn't have bearing in your life. When you sow that, you will reap. Are we getting it, church? Okay, so we need to be careful. On the things that we do in life. That's why it's so important. I can't emphasize enough the importance for us to spend time in the, His words. And a lot of Christians have to say that they, they don't see the value of the Word of God in their life. They never spend time in the Word of God. The only time that they can hear the Word of God is when they come to the church and hear the Word of God. But I encourage you, church. When you go back home, after the service, spend time in the Word. Because God has a plan for you. You need to, you need to know the purpose and the plan of God for your life. And God, you will, you, you can, you know, nobody can tell you about that. You have to personally receive it and to hear it from God Himself. Are we getting church? Okay? So... <clears throat> Right, because the reason why is that, you know, um, as I said you know, in Joshua chapter 21, verse 45, not one, all the promises of God fail. It will, it will come to pass when you stand on it, when you behold the promises of God. And that's actually we're going to talk about. You know, how, you know, uh, what's the process, you know? Uh, the Bible says, do not weary, right? In doing good. You know what? The most hard, hard, hardest part is waiting. Have you know that? Okay? That's the hardest part when you stand and, and waiting 
for the manifestation of God's promises in your life. And that's the reason why God said in, in, in Galatians 6 verse 9, said, do not be weary, to, you know, in doing good. Keep, keep sowing the good seed that I have planted into your heart. Right? Keep doing it. Don't go weary. Right? Don't, don't get tired. Okay? So, now, what we should do in order for us to not, you know, to become weary on the things of God for our life. Number one. Okay? Number one that we need to do, you need to understand that things uh, which are seen are temporal. The things that you see right now. Okay? You, you plant a good seed. You want to reverse the, the wrong things that is happening in your life. Right? right? That's good? And you want to reverse it. And you, you receive from God. You, 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 you went to God and God spoke to you. God revealed His words for you, for your life. And now you receive it. You agree with God. You behold that word and you start still sowing that good seed into your life. Right? And, and the Bible says, Right? In Colo in Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eighteen. Okay? Again, these are principles from the word of God that we also we need to understand. It says here, while we look uh, while we look not at, at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Why? For the things for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. I want you, I want you to focus the words uh, yourself on the word tempo, uh, temporal. Okay, the Greek word for that is pro, uh, proskairos. Okay, it means that it, it is for a time. It is for a change. It is for a season. Meaning, it's, it is subject to be changed. Right for the season. For what now, right? Where now what? In fall, right? It doesn't mean that throughout the years will be fall season. There will be a time, okay, that it will, the season will change now into winter, right? So meaning that's that's that that's what the word here describes the temporal. So meaning it is not the end of the world for us, that we will be on the same situation over a years and years and over, you know, for the coming years. God said those things are temporal and they are subject. To change okay so and 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 what god is telling us here is that we need we don't have to center our attentions on what we can see in the natural in the physical realm because anything that you see in the in in in, in, in the in the physical they can be changed and anything that you see in the natural are the result of what have taken place in the spiritual realm. Right? You agree with that? Okay? So in order for you, sometimes you can, you know, if, you, if somebody, if, if, let's say for example, there, there's a person that's so mean to you. Right? And everything, even though you do good for that person, you, you, they still, they have a hard heart for you. Okay? And, 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 and and sometimes you, you, you lose your person. You want to, you want to get even, right? But the, the thing is that we don't operate that way, right? If he, if a person just to, you know, to confront that person and they get into a physical, you know, manifestation of their anger, what will what do you think will happen? Riot, right? It will be it, it, instead of you getting, you know. Uh, Getting things in order and right, it becomes worse, right? Because what happened? You, 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 we, are for, uh, we are operating in the physical realm, the flesh. And you know what? The Bible says that we should not focus on the things that we see, the things that we experience in, 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 the, in the flesh. But the Bible says if you want to change that person, you have to operate in a spiritual realm. The things that you do not see. Right? Because the Bible says the things that are unseen, they are what? For eternity. It's eternal. Okay? So what happens is that we go to, to the spiritual realm, what will happen is that if you start praying for that person, and what the Bible says, when someone offended you, 
You get even? Bible says, pray. Bless them. Right? You don't curse them. I'm hoping that something will happen to them. Right? If we, because if we do that, we are missing the mark. What God said to us is that you need to bless that person. You need to pray for that person. For what? You know what? When you pray for a person, it blesses their soul. So you operate in the spirit of realm. When you bless that person in, 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 in the spirit, what will happen? Just like the rain, right? It will form a cloud, a dark cloud, and eventually, at a proper time, it will pour out. Nothing can stop that, Right? And the same thing also, church. If you want to make changes, uh, things in your life, you have to operate where? In the spirit where I am. On the things that you not see. Why? Because everything that you see right now, they are subject to be changed. When you operate in the right uh, method. Okay, which is what? Embracing the power of God in your life. Embracing what God says in your word, in, in, in your life. God said, bless them. Pray for them. And eventually, that person, that person will change. They cannot resist the power of God working in their life. Right? Start, start praying for your spouse. And I am blessed with my wife. She just, she just keep praying for me. <laughs> she keep praying for our children. She keep praying for, for, for the church. For our leaders. Right? And you know what? This, uh, when we started praying uh, in the morning at 5 o'clock, did you notice any changes? Before, when we met someone, we tried to go off. We go after them. But most of the time, you talk to them and after that, you won't see them anymore. You, you won't, even you talk to them, you send your messages, you call them, they never respond yeah, they will even give you a number that that's not them. And that's not belong to them. That's that number. That's, that's not their number. Right? But when now, when you start operating in the spiritual realm through prayers and blessing those people, what happened? Huh? The Holy Spirit starts working in the life of those people whom you have been praying for. The things that you see in them, the attitude, the character, they are subject to change when you start praying and blessing them in your prayers. You keep sowing the good seed of faith for them. You actually, you even standing, standing on the faith, or on the faith for that, for those people. Right? Are we getting a church? Okay? So, you know, if you notice here is that, you know, so the things it says here that the things are, that you see, that you don't see, are what? They are eternal. And they are not subject to change. That's the things that you do not see. Those are unseen. Okay? Those are eternal. So what are eternal? Eternal is what? The Word of God. You know what? The Bible contains promises to cover any circumstances that you will ever have or you will ever face in your life. That no matter what happened in this shifting and, and changing world that you live in, those promises of God will forever be the same. It will not change. What God declared, it will stand for eternity. Are we getting a church? So that's why we need to see the Word of God. It's so, you know, we need to give the Word of God the importance in our life. We have to embrace the Word of God in your life. You have to spend time. Don't just go browsing your, 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 uh, your, your Bible. Don't have the drive-through relationship to the Lord. Okay? And, and, and sad to say, that's what happened. Right? When things hit us, we panic. Why? Because we missed that words that God has spoken to us yesterday, 
right? Since we don't pay attention, we didn't receive it. Right? So that's why every day, so God's word says they are fresh every morning. Right? Every day. It doesn't mean that you already read that account. You're done. Okay? Every day, God will speak to you differently and very uniquely that you will need for your life. Are we getting church? Okay? So, hallelujah. <clears throat> so, as I said, okay, we must have the revelations from God. We must have, uh, we, we, the Word of God must be conceived into our heart. Okay? It will be happy. Why? Because miracle take place. It might not be a, 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 a miracle to the point of raising the dead. Uh, erasing the dead, you know, to life. If God's will, yeah, we can see that. But in our, our day and our, our daily lives, okay, miracles always happen in our life. We just have to pay attention to it. Sometimes our busyness in life, we lose the tendency of focusing ourselves on those small things. Right? And you know, the blessing of God comes from small things. It's like the parable of the Italians, right? It, it, you know, it doesn't just come with, with, with big things. Five talents, two talents, okay? Sometimes it comes with one talent. Right? It's a miracle. And what you do with that, with that one talent, and how you sow and apply the, har the law of the harvest, will determine how much growth that you will have and how much uh, how much you will experience the power of God working in your life. Alright? Are we getting a church? Okay? So, alright, so, where am I? So, number two, okay? So as I said, you know, in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 10, that we must what? Uh, walk by faith and not by sight. Okay? So meaning, we, faith is that we need to see things according to what God, uh, according to how God sees things in our life. We have, we don't have to operate on the physical realm. All right? How are you getting it? Okay. All right, number two. Okay, first one is to understand that the things that we see in are temporal. Number two, we need to agree with what God says regarding our situation. Okay, so that's how we, uh, uh, how we uh, not go weary about the things in life while we are waiting from God. You know, first, okay, you have to receive the word of God into your life. Just like I said a while ago, it's not just you hear it from someone else that they were quoting this verse and you said, oh, that's my life verse too. It's the, you know, things that you don't have revelations in that, those words, right? You have to personally come to God and ask God how God sees your situations. Are we getting church? You have to ask God. Because every situation, we have a different situation in our life, right? We, don't ha we have different needs and different you know, uh, 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 circumstances in our life, right? Maybe God has said that's what the revelations from God. Okay, to Pastor Mark, about the, uh, Pastor Nene, that's their revelations uh, that's concerning about their circumstances. Now, how about, do you think your circumstances the same with Pastor Mark and Pastor Nene? No. Right? That's why we have to have the personal revelations of Christ into our lives. And, so, and once you have that, the Bible says, what you need to do is you need to agree with what God says regarding what God has spoken to you. You have to agree with God. Okay, so there's a uh, an account in Matthew chapter 18. Okay, Ver actually this uh, verse 15 and 16. Actually, this verse is actually about dealing with sinning uh, brothers or brethren. Okay, but there's one when when it comes to uh, verse 16. There's one thing, uh, a principles that we can learn that we can apply into our life. 
Okay, let's, let's read them. Verse 15, Matthew chapter 18, verse 16. If you, if you have your Bible, please turn to uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Okay, not your Facebook, huh? No, not, not even your Instagram. I'm saying, you can look in your Bible apps, okay? And Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Okay? Again, I am saying that this, is, uh, this context is dealing with the sinning brethren. Okay, verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brothers. But verse 16. But if he will not hear, if, but sorry, if but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more. That by mouth by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Now, although this text is about, about uh, you know, uh, correcting uh, sinning brothers or sisters, okay? And, and, and the things, when I was reading it, it caught my attention saying on the word, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word must be established. So by the power of witnessing. When you witness, it means, I mean, uh, what that means that you are you have a personal encounter. You hear it. You see it. You were there. It's so live and it's so real. Right? Yeah, because you're the witness. And the Bible says, the principles and I would like to, uh, to, to, to show you is that the, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be what? Established. Right? You know, the Greek word for established is his time may. Okay, it means to stand still, to cause and make to uh, to make a place. I mean, it's it's become permanent. To set and make firm. That's the word that the Greek word used in this Bible. Okay, to be to be firm, to be permanent. Okay, to 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 uh, to stand still. Okay, so. And another word, witness. Okay, witness is what? It's a person, as I said a while ago, it's a person who sees an event or hears what was declared. Right? You have a, you were there. You have a personal encounter. Okay? And, and you know, um, what God is telling us here, what God is saying here is that by the witness, by the things that you see, hear from God, it's the one will cause you to be established concerning the promises of God. Right? When God speaks to you, right, you become what? A witness to that spoken words of God in your life. Are we getting it? But if you're not there and God speaks His word, or maybe you heard from somebody, you cannot be a witness. Right? Maybe Pastor Ken, he received that word. He's a witness to that word. God spoke to him. Right? Tayo, for us, is what? We're just what? Hearsay. Yeah, it becomes a hearsay, right? Because you know, you're, not, you're not personally involved in that. So you cannot, be, you cannot be a witness. So the things that you have to, that's why I keep saying is that you have to position yourself wherein you will be able to allow the Holy Spirit to speak the word of life to you. And then your spirit will bear witness. Oh yes, this actually comes from the Lord. You're the one who can only testify and witness to the spoken word of God. And you know what? When you have that witness, the Bible says, you will be what? Established. You see things that when God speaks to you, as far as God's concerned, that is right and that is true. Right? And, and, and for us, you know, you know what? When God works in our life, it takes, it takes two to tango. Meaning is that you need to agree with God what God has spoken to you in order for it to come to pass. Are we getting it, church? That's concerning the personal will of God for your life. You have to agree with what God says. Hello? 
You need to be a witness. Right? So that it will be established. It will stand firm. Tested throughout eternity. Are you getting a church? Huh? Okay, so, and the Bible says here in, the, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 20, it says here, For as many as the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered, yes. This is an amplified version. So, through Him we are, we say, Amen to the glory of God, uh, to the glory of God. Okay, so concerning uh, things of God, okay, when God speaks His words to you, the Bible says, they are all, yes. Okay? That is when you receive a personal revelation from God. They are all yes. Those are plans for, of God for your life. Okay? And, 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 the, okay? and the Bible says, um, So through Him we say our Amen to the glory of God. So Amen is what? What's Amen? You are agreeing with what God says. Okay? You are establishing yourself as a witness to that words God has spoken to you. You are declaring the truthfulness of that word. Okay? A wit and amen is actually, is actually uh, I do a search on this one, the word. It, it's, it's derived from the reflexive form of verb meaning to be firm. Okay? Again, establish. In order for you know for 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 the word of God be established in your heart. Okay? Because it's very important that we need to be established. Because anything, because the devil will come, he will test what you believe from what God says in your heart. He will test that. He will try to, to get that word out of your heart. Are you getting it? He, he will that, so that's why you have to guard that God's revelations in your life. You have to protect that words. Because if you don't take care of it, the devil will come. The devil will introduce things in your life. He will suggest an alternative for that promises of God in your life. And if you're not careful, you start you find yourself agreeing with what the devil says instead of what God says in his word. I hope you're getting something, church. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay, so the Bible says, again, is that, you know, when you say amen, you are making yourself as a witness. Okay? And the Bible says you, you, you will be established in, in your life. Okay, so like for example, uh, there is a verse like for example, example uh, Philippians four nineteen. You 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 meditate on the word of God and what is what it says in Philippians four nineteen, my God will supply all my need according to His riches and glory. I say you 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 have you are in a situation in your life, and 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 and, and uh, you know this what God is pulling to you. Because of what the problem is that if you don't have the word of God, you will be afraid to face it tomorrow. That's the time that the fear and voice will start knocking at the door of your heart. Why? Because they're unknown. They're a future. They're unknown, right? So if you don't have an assurance, then what will happen? You will be shaken. The devil will come and, 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 and shake you up. Right? And that's the reason why God wants you, what? To establish yourself, be a witness of His words and promises. It takes you to spend time in the Word of God. Are we ready? Okay? So, hallelujah. So, let's say you're doing a meditation and God has spoken to you. So when you have that word, you start sowing that good seed into your spirit, into your life, in the life of your family. That says that, and when the devil comes, 
He said, oh, no, that's not true. You, you, you will be in need. God will not provide anything. Just quote that verse. Go back to that verse. Because you are a personal witness when God spoken that words to you. Pastor Mark cannot stand it for you. I cannot stand it. Like I cannot stand for that word for you. You have to stand by yourself. Right? Embracing that word. You have to be stubborn. You know? Just like Job was in his faith. Right? Remember Job? He was stubborn in his faith. Okay? So, again... So once you have that word, treasure it. And, and may I ask you, who will determine how it will turn out? Okay? You will. You will determine by the actions, you know, you respond to that word. Remember, every word that God spoke to you, you have to respond to it. And whatever it's respond that you will take to that God revealed words for you. That will determine the of directions of your life. Are we getting it, church? Okay? So, it will determine. You are the, the one who will... Because you are the one, the witness. If the witness stands, you know, back off from his... Uh, from their, you know, from their testimony, do you think that they will stand? They, that, that case will stand before the court? No. The judge will just dismiss it, Right? Even though you have the facts, the truth, but if a witness withdrew his testimony, that's the end of the case. Same thing also when it comes to our relationship with God, the concerning about the Word of God in our life. You have the power to invalidate and validate the Word of God in your life. Okay? The Word of God stands forever. We just need to align ourselves to the promises of God. Let's be a witness so that we will be established in our faith. That no matter what happens, even the devil comes, you will stand up on what you believe, on what God says concerning about your situations. Are we getting it, church? Okay, so, hallelujah. Number three. Okay, number one, understand that the things are seen are temporal, right? Number two, we, that we need to agree with what God says regarding our situations. We need to have a revelations from God. We need to declare it. Number three, as you wait for the manifestation of God's promises uh, in your life, you have to season the words the seed with prayers. Okay? Because, it, because the Bible says at the proper time, if you don't give up, you will reap a harvest. Meaning, it's not right now. God can give you. When you pray, when you sow, you can, you know, there are times that you will see the, uh, you will reap right away. But there are times that God will cause you to wait. Why? Because God doesn't work in our own timetable. When God sees it, it is right. He will do it. You will have it. You will have your harvest. Right? But during that waiting time, from the time that you seek the face of God, from the time that you receive the promises of God in your life concerning your situation, you start sowing the good seed, right? So what are you going to do until it manifested? You have to water that word with your prayers. Right? Pray. Okay? You know what? Pray is very important to the movement of the Holy Spirit. Prayer is important to the movement of God in our lives, in our church, in your family. It's very important. Prayers. Okay? So, hallelujah. So, but for many people, the reason why, you know, the, for many people, the reason why many people doesn't enjoy, doesn't pray, it's because they don't enjoy their prayer time. Okay? Remember, every time, everything that you do, keep doing, you do it because you enjoy it. Right? Okay? Anything 
that you endure, what happened? You quit. Right? So, prayer, a lot of people, they, they never spend time in prayer. It becomes so burdened in their heart because they don't enjoy their prayer time. Okay? So, it's like in marriage, you build your marriage like not because you have to, right? Because if you build your, start building your marriage like because you have, you have to do it, guess what? It will not last long, right? You build your marriage because you want it. You enjoy your spouse, their presence, okay? There is what we call love. That keep that your marriage getting deeper. Okay? So it's our relationship also with the Lord. Okay? So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. says, See, but you, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut, uh, when you shut your door, pray to the Father who is in secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you Often, open, openly. Oh, openly. Openly. <laughs> okay, no, so, so the first thing that I need to tell you about the secret place that what the Bible says that you have to close the door when you come to the secret place so that God can open windows for you. Okay? And, 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 a lot of people, they never get into the presence of God in the sec secret place it's because they never close the doors. Okay? They left the doors open. And, 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 and you know, we, we need to understand here another principle is that if you want to be, to enjoy your time with the Lord, you want to enjoy your prior time with the Lord, okay? The principle is that you need to close the door. Now, that door is called distractions. So, what distractions do is that uh, is, is, is split your focus. Okay? And, even, and, uh, and then, then actually uh, give birth to defeat if we are so distracted. And I remember when I was driving, you know, back home from work. You know, that's uh, uh, Arthur Us, right? Arthur Us Street in front of the... Uh, the uh, stadium. There was a traffic light, and I was. It's about stop, and then suddenly it moved, and I moved. But the problem is that I was, I was on my phone, and then I didn't realize that the car in front of me just suddenly stopped. And a good thing, yeah, yeah, I hit that car. But the good thing is that it doesn't have much damage. Just, just, just a scratch. Okay? Because it's just about, you know, we're just about to move. And I did, I wasn't, I was distracted, I was on the phone. Okay? And I hit that car. And great, it got, and that person is so gracious enough to let me go. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay? And I learned my lesson. <laughs> okay, so, so what happened to me is actually what happened in our prayer time with the Lord. And the reason why we never get into the presence of God because we left our door open, which is our distractions. And every time that we spend time in prayer, uh, a lot of us, we are easily get distracted. We have, we have our phone in front of us. And you know what our phone, right? If you sign up with so many app, apps, applications installed in your, in your phone, there's always ding, 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 ding. When you're about to pray, yeah, there's so many notifications. Someone will call you. Someone will text you. You know, your Facebook, your Instagram, or whatever, your My, uh, uh, MySpace, if you have that. So. <laughs> or your AOL account. So whatever it is. It will ding, it will ding, ding, ding. Okay? So it, 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 it's easily get, you know, we easily get struggle. I don't know if you, it happened to you. Right? Yeah, it happened to me. When I start praying, and I suddenly, I was in the mirror. It was about maybe about, about a minute. 
And then suddenly there is a, you know, there's a distraction. There's a notification, right, uh, from my apps. And said, oh, I will just have to look at especially the news. Because I was following the uh, event. Okay, so I was, uh, and then I, I lost my, 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 my connections with God. I get distracted from the things that I should be, you know, uh, spending. Okay? So, and that's what happened. That's why we never get into the presence of God. So the things that we need to do is that, in the Bible says, we need to close the door. We need to stop watching. We, do, we, didn't, we need to stop praying or doing your devotions and spending time with God in front of your TV. Right? Because there's so many Korean dramas, Netflix, and uh, and a couple with you with your phone, right? Oh, the devil is trying, you know, the devil will always play with us. Connecting with God, okay? You can feel that, right, in your spirit that you are, you know, you are in the process of connecting at the moment, and that the devil will do a distraction. Bing! And it will stop. And you stop praying and giving the things that are important to you now. This is your phone, your TV, your Netflix, your Korean drama. Okay? So it just only reveals what is important in our heart when it comes to the things of God. Are we getting it, church? Okay? So if you are with me and you need to do what you need to do. Right? Close the door. Okay? Close the door. Okay? Are we getting it? Okay? And some other people, okay, um, they, 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 they close the door, okay, but they cannot connect with God. And sometimes people are too busy to pray. You know? And they, 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 uh, uh, they uh, either for, you know, they're too busy for work, and they will say, Lord, I know you, you know what's going in my heart. You know, I love you, but sorry, I'll make up next time. Right? We're too busy to pray. In fact, the most important things that we should be praying, when we are busy, that's the most important time that you need to, don't, the, most important thing, the most, most important thing that you need to do is to pray. Right? Just like Martin Luther, he said, you know, that the, the most, if he becomes so busy, he said, that's the time I need to be in prayers. That's the time that I should be in my knees praying. Because when you become busy, you become vulnerable for the things of the devil against you. Spend more time. Because when you spend more time in, the, in, in prayers, in the Word, in seasoning that, uh, that seed that you're sowing in your life, in the life of your loved ones, okay? when you start sowing that thing, when you start praying for them, keep praying, right? You are going to establish. You are in the practice of agreeing with what God says. All right? Are we getting a church? Okay, so don't be too busy to, to, to pray. Okay, and then the last thing, the last thing I would like to, when it comes to prayer, when you see sitting, uh, watering your, your, your seed with, with prayers, that, you know, um, if you go back to the scriptures, um, verse uh, 6, it says here, but when you pray into your room, first that, we need to shut down the door. We need to get rid of all distractions. For we know what this effect will do to us if we don't close the door. And the second thing is that it says here, pray to your father who is in secret place. Okay? So what does it mean? Don't go to the, to, to, uh, don't go to the secret place to look for God. Why? Because God is already there. You see the word? Pray to your Father who is in secret place. What God is saying, I'm already there. 
Sometimes we're gu- I'm, 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 I'm forget is that when I come to God in prayer, I was just kind of in the sense of seeking God as if God's lost. You know what I mean? Right? But the fact, but the truth is, God said, He's already in the secret place. He is already in the secret place. Okay? So, so you don't seek Him, you know, because you need Him. God is actually inviting us, you know, uh, to just to be with me. Okay? So, you know what? When, when, when we pray, we pray, right? We, we pray because we love the presence of God. We want, we want to experience the presence of God. Uh, but did you know that God loves your presence more than you love His presence? God loves your presence just being there. He enjoys your presence more than you enjoy His presence. Okay, so when, when I when I look at this one, I said, "Oh wow, that's different, though." It changed my 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 you know my belief when coming to prayer, because sometimes we go and pray, we rush, and then Lord, please, 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 right? Yeah, I don't, you know, I want to see. No, it's God's already there. That we need to have. What I'm trying to hear is that God wants us to have a mindset. That God wants us to be there, just like with Moses, right? He was on the uh, on the mountain top, right? He spent there how many times? He's doing nothing. He just only he's just there because God enjoy His presence. Just. Moses just sealing out with the Lord. Because, you know, God enjoyed his presence. So he said, Lord, enjoy me. I'm here. Right? So that's that kind of prayer. You know, sometimes people are having a hard time to come because we try to, you know, manipulate God and look for God as if it. But if we're going to look on the other perspective, but God is already in a secret place. It's God is He wants to enjoy your presence. That will make a difference, church. Are we getting it, church? Right? Hallelujah. Right. I hope we're getting something. Okay? So and, and, and I remember, you know, he he I remember just like you, you my, yeah, like my grandchildren. Every morning if I working from home. Right? They, they, they will come to me and I will embrace them. I will call them. Right? And then I will hug them. I was enjoying their presence. Okay? And I, 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 was, I, you know, I, was, I was enjoying their presence, hugging them, and feeling the love. Okay? And you know what, what the Lord says? You know, you know that, that love that you felt embracing that your, your, your grandchildren? Is exactly what I feel for you every single day when you come to me. God wants to enjoy your presence. Right? Are we getting a church? Okay? So, so God loves your presence more than you enjoy His. Okay? And I want you to understand is that, you know, prayer is not just getting something out of God. It is God trying to get you, getting your heart, Getting, getting your presence. Okay? Sometimes He just wants you to be there. I don't know if you have experienced that. You just just throw yourself at the presence of God. You don't even pray. Right? But you feel His presence. You feel His embrace. Right? Maybe it's about time to change how we approach God. Draft your purchase order. Because sometimes a lot of people, they come to God, they have a list of purchase order. Lord, I need this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
and the second page. 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Do you think you will enjoy the presence of God? No. Just drop it. For God said that I will supply your need according to my riches and glory. Come. I just want to hug you and embrace you. And we are in that kind of presence, church. The love of Jesus will fill our heart. There will be peace. There will be contentment. There will be joy. Huh? Have you tried that, church? Let's change our attitude when it comes to prayer. I say, Lord, I'm here. Enjoy me. Right? Enjoy me. And you know what? When you have that kind of attitude, God will fill your heart so much that God will move in your life. That you will have that complete peace in your heart, believing that what God has spoken to you, you, you sow it into your life, in the life of your loved ones, it will come to pass. That's how you season your, your seeds in prayer. Enjoy the presence of God in your life. Amen? Are we getting in church? And sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't want, uh, we are guilty. Can I have a few more minutes? Sometimes we are guilty of coming to God because I never prayed for maybe three weeks. Right? And we have this kind of guilt in our heart that, you know, we want to come to God. So, you know what? I'll tell you. If you miss your wife or your spouse for three days, okay, what do you feel? You feel guilty for me uh, for not seeing your wife, or your husband for three days, or four days, or a week? You feel guilty? No, you feel you miss them, right? You miss them. You have this longing, so it's it, it's actually. Even though, you know, in our, in our failure, God is missing us. He wants to spend His time with us, church. Are we getting it? Okay? So let's get rid of those things that, God, that the devil uh, put in, us, in our life that He wants to hold us for us not to come to God fully surrender to Him. Right? It's the same also principles in, I think, Genesis chapter, chapter 3. That when Adam and Eve sinned against the Lord, right? They eat the forbidden fruit. The apple. Is it apple? No. <laughs> apple of, of, uh, well, apple of, <laughs> fruit of the knowledge of good and evil tree. That's the name of tree. Okay? When they eat that, okay? So they sin against the Lord. You know what? The following day, God show up to the meeting place. Right? Actually, God can say, oh, since you disobey me, I'm not going to our meeting. I will cancel that meeting. Right? But no. Despite of their, God knows that they sin against the Lord. God knows their weaknesses, but still God show up. Right? And Adam and Eve, did they, did they, they, they hide themselves. And God was looking for them. Where are you? It doesn't mean that God doesn't know what happened. He knows. And God is longing for the presence. Church, you, you know what I'm trying to say here? Even in our failures, sometimes we have that we feel guilty coming to God in prayers. We need to get rid of that. That's the principle that we can see with Adam and Eve, you know, that, that in despite of their failures, God still show up. God still longing for the presence. And God is still longing for your presence too. Amen? Okay? So, that's how we see. How we, how we you know, uh, that, that's the process that we need to learn in order for us to not give up. Right? Because the Bible says if you keep sowing, Sowing the good seed that comes from the word of God, which is you receive by revelation, personal revelations, right? It's not hearsay, 
Okay, you receive it and you keep sowing it and sowing and watering it with your prayers and getting into the presence of God. The Bible says in due time, if you don't give up, you will reap what you sow. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, O God, for your grace. And Lord, we thank you so much, O God. It is our prayer, O Lord God, that you will continue to change our heart with a new perspective, perspective, O Lord God, that comes from your word, O Lord God. God, we pray that we will continue to learn the importance of your words, the spoken words in our life, O Lord God. That we will behold it, O Lord God. That we will embrace your words, O God, more than what the word says, O Lord God. God, we know your words are eternal. It will stand forever. And your words, O oh God, is desire is for us to have a good life and a fruitful life, Lord. Father, we thank you, God, Lord. I pray, pray that I speak for blessings upon your people, O oh God, that we will continue, O oh God, to believe on what you have spoken to us today, O oh Lord God. But we will treasure your words in our heart. Write it in the tablet of our heart, Lord God, that your words will become part of our life, of life. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.